The Cheese Works is out in Gardner, Kansas, and we're here with Marshall Jewett. Yep. <laughs> Want to pronounce that right? Marshall Jewett. And, and uh, you know, I think the first couple of shows that we've had on uh, the Shop Talk, why we've had a lot of young folks that are just getting started uh, and really appreciate all them and, you know, what it takes for them to go through this learning process of racing because, boy, it does take a while to get up to where you know what's going on and how to handle things. But Marshall, uh, man, uh, what got you interested in racing in the first place? Oh, I liked racing as a kid and and, uh, just never got the opportunity until when I had my own house and my own money and was able to do it, which was, I started in 86. And, uh, but I've always liked racing and it's a financial burden, but it's it's a lot of fun. I've I've never heard it called that, but okay, go ahead. a A lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I can understand that. Uh, I've raced radio control cars for quite a while, and it's a burden. <laughs> Thank goodness my wife is understanding, I can tell you that. But uh, my understanding, uh, 86 uh, over there in Riverside, man, you got uh, third place in the very first run out. Is it Lakeside, old Lakeside oh, Dirt? Lakeside, okay. Yeah, I got third place, very first run, and uh, as uh, I never repeated it that year, but it was a <laughs> it was a good thing to think that out of the box I was uh, pretty decent. Didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how, anything about the car, how to set it up, or how to drive. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I was gonna say you just didn't know what was going on. <laughs> of course, you only got one place to go when you start out that good. Only one place to go, and that's down. Um, you've run around a lot in the, those 22 years. Um, do you have a preference? I know you're running at Lakeside right now, but I, I heard you talk earlier, like say, ran Riverside, Adrian, a lot of places. Do you prefer the large track or the small tracks? Oh, I like the large track. Like, I mean, I really like Lakeside and what we're doing right now, but uh, like I-70 on the pavement, it's really fast. We used to go 150 miles an hour, on, uh, me personally, on the straightaways at I-70 in the late model. and. That's really a lot of fun, but when you wreck, you really tear up the car, and it's real expensive. So, uh, I just—it's a hobby, and uh, you got to keep it in that. And I try to keep it to just two nights a week working on the car. Uh-huh. And uh, I only work on this car. I do not work on the street stock. A lot of people don't realize that. And I just drive that one, and uh, that's Ron James's car. Uh-huh. And so my concern is this car, which really luckily got a win in this one this year. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as the pavement versus the dirt. Um, I know it sounds like you enjoyed the pavement, but have you got a preference? And are you glad where you're that where you're at? Are you glad you're where you are now racing? Oh, I'm I'm happy what I'm doing right now. Uh, if uh, money was no object in the world, I'd go right back on pavement probably again. Also, you know, and do both, uh-huh. and then race on Saturday nights. But uh, the tires we run them as long as we can on the dirt and on pavement you had to get them all the time to be Uh competitive so it keeps it in balance easier on the dirt just Mm -hmm. for the cost of the tires and we've been running the same motor all year Uh, it's a new one this year but we run the last one two or three years and uh, you know so and we still have it as a backup Mm -hmm. so you know we try to keep things simple I was going to say you know uh, I believe uh, I hate to single out but I-70 is the only asphalt track in the area, but they've definitely been having their troubles this year. I think they've cut back to uh, one show every other weekend. Um, do you think uh, that the asphalt racing is just about had it? I mean, is it the cost that's driving it out? Well, racing in general is real expensive, and without sponsors, the cost to a person like me myself is astronomical to, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollar motor, ten thousand dollar car, you know, and then four hundred dollars a week for tires. Mm-hmm. And a, you know, a person, a normal person, can't do it uh, without sponsors. And right now, money's tighter than ever for mm-hmm. everybody, even the people that had money before. Mm-hmm. So I think the pavement is even tighter for people. And you know, we never had money before, so it doesn't seem to bother me too much. <laughs> we just keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I'm wrong in this, you tell me. But it it sounds like to me that most of the time you've run late model. I ran uh, late model on dirt and I ran late model on pavement. I had two cars when I was running pavement. I ran a lot of late model races. I mean, I ran on dirt against X Junior down at Nevada oh, and wow, stuff. And I good. made I made some uh, like the all uh, all pro uh, circuit stuff. And uh, I. Uh, 
made one of those uh, NASCAR dirt shows, late model, old lakeside dirt, yeah. and a late model. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, probably didn't know what I was doing. Probably shouldn't have been there, maybe. You know, I, I didn't have a dad that helped me with my racing. It was just me. <laughs> there, <laughs> so, you go, <laughs> there you go, Shelby. <laughs> no dad. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. I guess what the question is I really want to ask you is you run mostly late model, but uh, boy, this year at Lakeside, you, you jumped into that street stock. Uh, why oh ron uh ron asked me to drive the car and i said i can drive it but i can't work on it and so uh the uh, car that car is actually for matt and it's supposed to be uh if he gets a b average he gets to drive the car and so hopefully matt will get a b average <laughs> as ron's son it's a good car i mean it's really competitive and and uh it'd be good experience for him yeah so we all hope that he does good in it yeah um uh, is lakeside I'm, I'm interviewing mostly drivers from Lakeside, so I, I guess it's a give me. But is Lakeside where everybody wants to race? I mean, is it the um, front and center show or whatever in Kansas City as far as racetracks are going? Yeah, it's it's premier track because it has the most cars, the best drivers. It takes you know a good setup because it's got the big corners it takes a good motor because it's got a lot of straightaway speed and you know so you got to have both you got to be able to drive it and you got to have a horse under the hood so uh -huh. and uh so it takes a, a lot and so it's really good okay um i was going to ask you this but i think it's never mind i won't even ask you that question <laughs> um I understand this car is uh, fairly old. Tell us about it. You said, I think you've been, this is the sixth year with it. Is that right? Yeah, I think uh, we had one other car and we wrecked in like 2001. We built this car and then uh, they, uh, it's a uh, old Larkins modified. We've cut it in half and redone all the suspension points and uh, made it into what it is now. And a motor is uh, something that we put together here and we yeah. build the bodies here. And, and so it's pretty much our own doing. <laughs> so here in the house <laughs> here in the house um, what who, who's building the motor for this car uh, I assembled it uh, it was uh, Kenny helps with it uh, the uh, buzzard gave, got me the components and uh, John's machine shop did the block and then um, Chad a, a guy down in uh, uh, Lacine did the heads mm. and uh, we put it together here and Kenny puts the cam in and yeah and so it's kind of a hodgepodge and and away we go so <laughs> I was gonna say when you got a budget team man you gotta you gotta do things like that it's not like especially in that modified class out there where you go and rent a motor or whatever or got 20 grand to flop down for one of them big rascals but uh anyway like you say what's what a low budget team's got to do yeah well uh, most teams won't believe it but that motor is less than five thousand dollars with a new oil pan and everything brand new so i mean it, it's a good piece i mean it runs right with them but it's not a twenty thousand dollar motor <laughs> <laughs> okay since we're talking motors this question just popped into my mind did would the grand national class be better served if uh, maybe it was a crate motor class no because somebody will cheat the crate motor class and we already all have all this and uh it could be made four barrel it could be left two barrel it could be the same whoever's got the big money is going to spend the big money right so that doesn't matter yeah exactly that, that is very true okay we're down to sponsor time <laughs> i know this is going to be short marshall because <laughs> we talked about it earlier but uh, uh anybody at all out there that you want to thank that's behind uh jewett racing uh, my wife melanie i really want to thank her and uh, the daughter megan so and the boy david so he's not here but we're he's with us in spirit uh -huh. so he's at the air force right now okay so already that's pretty much it okay that's the cheese works with shop talk from gardner with marshall hewitt uh Folks, it's been a pleasure to come out here and visit with these people. And uh, anytime you're at the racetrack, why, man, get down there in the pits and say, hey, appreciate what you guys are doing. Have a lot of fun watching. But that's going to be it for Shop Talk.